black 70 denier to the hook shank. After I clip that excess thread, I'm going to bring in a strand of small silver UTC wire. Catch it with a couple wraps and slide it up to where it slips in behind the bead. And start to wrap rearward. I'm going to take another half a dozen wraps. And I'm going to pause there. At this point, I'm going to bring in about four strands of black pheasant tail. As far as the positioning of these goes, once I get them tied in, I want them to be about the length of the hook shank. So catch them with a few wraps. Continue to wrap rearward. As I wrap back, I'm going to keep two things in mind. I want to try to make sure that I keep that wire on the opposite side of the hook shank. And then as I wrap down, I'm going to take my wraps to a point where the hook bends and actually points down toward the vise. Once I've reached that point, I'm going to return my thread, laying down side-by-side -side wraps up to about the two-thirds point of the hook shank. I get here, I'll snip off the excess, cover up the back end of that wire. I'm actually going to return the thread partially back to where I tied those in, and this is just in an effort to create a little bit of a taper. Once I've created that, I'm going to come in and start to bring my silver ultra wire forward. When I get it up to about even with that hook point, secure it with a couple snug thread wraps and then I'm just going to helicopter it off. I'm going to bring in two strands of red floss to catch them with just a couple loose wraps here and then slide those fibers down to where they drop in behind the bead. I'm going to wrap back to just add or behind that hook point covering up that, that uh, spot where I helicoptered off the wire. Then I'm going to come in with four strands of black crystal flash and this is midge size so it's a lot smaller than the standard size perfect for a little betas pattern like this. I'm going to get them wrapped in there connected and wrap back to that same stopping point. Then I'll use a little bit of loon swax, apply a little tack to my thread. I'm going to bring in some natural hair's ear dubbing and this is in black. And I'm going to create just a little bit of a dubbing rope here. Once I've created that rope, I'm going to bring this forward with nice firm snug wraps all the way up behind the bead. And I want to make sure that I do a decent job of filling that void on the back of the bead right there behind it. That's going to help me to ensure that those legs when I tie them in are tapered toward the rear of the fly and don't just splay directly out to the sides. So once that's taken care of, I'm going to bring my four fibers of crystal flash forward, got a wrap or two over the top of them, and then I'm going to split them. And obviously I'm going to look for half and half, so I'm going to go two on the near side and pull those back and catch them with the wrap here out to the side. Then I'm going to take the other two and pull them down the far side. Following that I'll bring those two strands of floss forward. Catch them with a nice snug wrap or two. And I'm going to wrap all the way up making sure that I'm right at the back side of the bead because then I'm going to pull them back secure them with just a couple nice tight wraps. By working it all the way up to the back side of the bead, that just ensures that I have a nice smooth taper across the top of the fly. Come in, snip those. When I trim these legs, I want them to be a little bit shorter than the body itself. So I'm going to come in there and snip. Once I have that taken care of, I'm going to whip finish the fly.